Hey beer tubers, Ryan here, back from another episode of San Diego Beer Blog. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at a collaboration beer between two of California's most popular breweries, Sierra Nevada and Russian River. And this is Brux, what they're calling a domesticated wild ale. Uh, it's called Brux because they're using a strain of Britannomyces, a wild yeast that's called Bruxellinus. I'm probably butchering that, but Brux for short. And it's the domesticated part because they're taking one strain of, of a wild yeast strain and using it to produce this beer. So what's cool about this is uh, Vinny from Russian River talked it, Ken Grossman, the owner of Sierra Nevada, into uh, you know allowing a wild yeast strain into this Sierra Nevada brewery. So this is why this is in Porch Cage 750 because it was produced at Sierra Nevada the first time they ever allowed the yeast in there, which could be a major problem if, uh, if it got loose in the brewery, especially the amount of beer that Sierra Nevada produces. So uh, let me get the ABV on this one. I haven't even checked myself. It's 8.3%, so it's pretty big. Uh, they call it dry and complex Belgian-style ale, re-fermented in the bottle with Britannomyces bruxellinus. So appearance-wise, it pours out pretty hazy orange. Uh, had about a finger ahead that's really fading away really quickly. It's pretty bright white. Kind of medium sized bubbles on there. Yeah, good amount of carbonation streaming up, but really, really hazy orange. So let's get the nose on it. It's got a lot of fruitiness. Uh, definitely a floral note in there as well. Slight bits of funk, um, but not as much funk as I'd like. It's, it, it smells more kind of what it says on the bottle though. As opposed to being like 100% Brett fer fermented beer, which at this point might be some more kind of funkiness. This one's, yeah, it smells like a Belgian ale and the Brett's still kind of working on it. Maybe like what Orval would kind of be like young. Yeah, maybe a bit of a hop, like a grassy hop note. Some kind of spicy phenolic notes, maybe coming from the primary yeast strain. It's got a little bit of a, like a pineapple character to go with some sweet apricot. Yeah, just a little bit of that kind of earthy funkiness, but not that big, bold funkiness you get in a lot of lambics. So uh, let's give this a try. Cheers. Yeah, it mostly tastes like a Belgian pale ale. You can tell that there's, you know, a little bit of that wild yeast character in there, but it's still kind of kind of fresh tasting. Up front, you get a lot of carbonation attack in the palate, and I'm hit with this kind of spicy dry character. Probably come from the yeast, maybe some hops coming through, a little bit of like earthy, kind of grassy note. And then the uh, the sweetness picks up midway through, and I get a lot of fruitiness, but also get a ton of big bready notes in there as well. There's a touch of like a white wine sort of grape character, but it's very faint. I think the like pear-like character tends to be predominant on the sweeter side of a pear. You know that typical kind of stone fruit character, and, it, and it's almost kind of turning into that kind of pineapple character you sometimes get with with Brett, but it's just not quite there. It's not quite developed. Um, very dry finish. The 8.3% alcohol is very well hidden though. You, you maybe feel it slightly, but it's really well hidden. Never came across my mind when I'm drinking this. As it warms, definitely get more of that kind of phenolic spicy yeast ester note. It kind of dominates a little more than I, that I'd like the Brett to. I wish there was more funkiness but like they say, it's gonna develop in time in the bottle, but right now, uh, this one's pretty average for me. I'm gonna go with the C. It's, it's, it's an okay, it's a good starter beer if you've never had a wild yeast strain, and this might go to a lot of places where, you know, a beer like this is, fin I mean, if you, have, if you can get a Revolve, then you kinda of know the character, but this is, if it's a good at least opportunity to see what at least one strain of Brett does, although it, you know, only in bottle conditioning form, but 
If you do get a bottle of this, I highly recommend aging it at least six more months. Uh, it just tastes really young right now, and I, the breath's going to develop. I'll probably buy one more bottle just to see how it goes, and maybe give it like at least six months, of it, and not another year, and see how it's drinking. Because this this beer, I think, has some potential to to, to develop, but it's just not, not quite there yet. So, you know, I recommend trying out if you're a fan of wild ales, but certainly not up there with the best of them. You know, you have all the Belgian authentic lambics and, and goose and, you know, Russian River's own line of beers. You know, get sanctification. Try that one. That's a great way to try a 100% Brett beer. So, um, yeah, this one's pretty average, unfortunately. So, until next time, please comment, subscribe. Cheers.